<laughs> the story about you at the brickyard is the one that yeah, really that's, strikes I mean, I me. I think that, that's pretty telling. I mean, we go back to 93 or 94, leading up to the brickyard. That's the biggest deal that ever happened in our sport for years, right? And uh, we go up there, and I win the first time competition. I take the pole, or I win the pole. And uh, so we run that race. I think Gordon wins the first race. So we go back the second year, all through testing. Because then we used to go up there the whole field, man. It would be 60 cars, 60 cars up there tested for a week. You mm -hmm. know? And all during that test session, my car is always in the top two or three, fastest. You know, I think <laughs> Dale wins that race. Right. right. We go right. back the third year testing same deal there's the one car out there hauling butt again fast you know just everybody's coming over what are you doing they're looking at the car the thing the thing that always goes on two or three days of this goes on and i'm standing there one time somebody pecks me on the shoulder and i look around it's earnhardt so what are you doing what are you doing son he says uh rick he says i got problems i said what's your problem now he said, <laughs> <laughs> he says, i can't figure out what's going on with my race car he said would you you got time to go over and get in my car and drive it i says yeah it's no problem so uh, I went over and I got I jumped in his car and I drove it a few laps. You know, and it really was screwed up. <laughs> he was right yeah. about that. Yeah, because I come <laughs> in and I got out and he says, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, Dale, you go in the corner. The first thing that happens, the right front falls out out from under itself." And he turns around at Petrie and Richard. Yep, see there, that's what I've been trying to tell these people. They won't listen to me. And when you get on the gas, pushes don't. I said, "I hadn't got that far yet, Dale. Just wait a minute." <laughs> you know, he just livid, right? Right. I said. Uh, you know, I feel a good car. He said, yeah, I'm going to get in yours. I said, go get in mine. So he gets in it and get, runs a few laps. He comes in. He comes over just screaming at Petrie and Childers. That's the way the car is supposed to feel. I, 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 I'm just raising the holy cane. But anyhow, here's the deal, guys. Here's a man that's probably the best that ever drove a race car. You know, that, or I was with, put it that way. We don't want all the races. They want all these championships. Best going, you know, the man, the intimidator, the king, everything. Not the king, but the, he's, the, he's the man, right? Right. Comes to a, a guy that's never won a cup points race, right, and wants his help trying to figure out what's wrong with his race car. Right. Now, how many people would do that? How many people would not let their pride get in the way of saying, I got to have some help somewhere because I want to win, folks. This is all I want to do. I want to win. If Mass can help me win, whatever, he's good at this track, whatever I'm going to go to Mass. Whatever I've got to do to win, I'm going to do, right? right? pride be damned you know what i'm saying yeah well, how about earnhardt's last win were you on the track that day at talladega, talladega. in the year yeah. 2000 yeah when he drove from what it was it 16th on the last oh, lap or some well, crazy I, thing I even, like that i don't even think about those deals at Del daytona talladega he would shuck and jive and move and you'd he see just him. knew where to well, go you see right? him coming in the mirror say, all right i'm gonna get on with earnhardt and go you know in these five laps you don't even see him he's leading right and you're like he does all this crap. I don't even like to talk about that because it's just that's a whole other stratosphere. Whatever he'd do at those tracks, you know what I mean? Because again, I would, I, like, I'd always try to learn from everybody, right? Know? And everybody always tried to learn from Earnhardt, and that's one of the things that helped him too. Because everybody always hook on to Earnhardt. He would go out and make a right. move by himself, but it looks silly, right? It would be silly, but there's two guys who say, "Oh, Earnhardt's doing it. Let me hop over. Let me hop up." There and and all of a sudden, that move would become a pretty move, smart move, right? right. Smart uh -huh. move, and it was, you know, but it kind of worked. It that's the kind of way that deal worked. But at the same time, he knew when he made that move, it was stupid. But he knew these two guys were stupider than him, and they would follow <laughs> him. You know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't just a, just a non-thought-out move that right. he'd make. But just anything, just pull up any clip from any Daytona Talladega race when he run, you know, and just watch it. I mean, if you want to be, you know, if you just want to be mesmerized, just watch any, any old race he was in at those places, you know. I mean, I watched him and couldn't figure it out, you know. Yeah. Everybody else watched him and couldn't figure it out. You know, you do the best you could do. You know, with the air and the wind and all that, because it is big. It's a big time deal. But he was, you know, he was just good at. It. And the other thing too, when Dale come along, these cars weren't packed up like that. He was taught by Richard and Kale and Pearson and all those right. guys. And that was before that's the back in like the slingshot yeah, days. Yeah, that was and back that. before the the restricted plates, and they weren't bunched up like they are now. You know what I mean? So he had to re he had to learn also a whole different style of racing when those restrictor plates hit. Well, Waltrip know? talks about that in his book, how how he came to Waltrip and he said he, he uh, how Earnhardt said he he had it figured out. You know, we're going to work together, you Junior and me. We're going to work together to try to win this Daytona 500. And it's hard, I think, today to to realize how how different and radical that was of right. a strategy. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, some people blame the wreck on him. Blocking, blocking, blocking Sterling front, and Schrader. Right. Look at the—they're half lap. There's lap to go. 
I mean, a lap to go, he wasn't blocking. That's right? exactly what Michael said when we talked to him about it. He's like, we had the thing won. They had it won. <laughs> Michael and Junior were gone. They were baby. gone. Down the right. back straightaway, one of those two cars were going to win right. the race. Dale was too far back right. with Sterling and, and Schrader and that bunch. Michael's thought was it, it may, Dale was just trying to get the – Best beat Best those finish. guys. He was trying to beat those guys at that point. And right. you but were his two cars. One of his two cars had already won the race. You know what I mean? That wasn't. Yeah, and wasn't you were on it. the track that day. Mm -hmm. um, so well, take, that's right. Take us through through your emotions, through your emotions, emotions, and, and wh wh you when you out found out and how you found. You out. You hop out of the car and you out of there. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't. You know, that, right? That's you're not deal. unless you're in victory lane. You're unless not you're hanging around. Had you? In, those, in fact, in those days too, you didn't. They they didn't require you to stay around. You know, the top five guys, whatever, have to stay around. Top three, yeah, I mm -hmm. think. You, know, yeah. you just hop in your car and go. You know. So did you have an awareness when you got no, out of the car no, that something was no, going no, on? No, we were home. I think we were home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We were home probably before they make an announcement. I believe. You know. You were on your plane. But and the, out. That, you know that to me is just the fact. You know the ironic, ironic part. You know him and Neil were such good buddies. Mm -hmm. Neil Bonnet. Right. And Neil had had some bad crashes, man, you know. And uh, I'm friends with a lot of his guys on Facebook, by the way. Oh, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah, Neil's, his, Neil's family. But anyhow, you ought to know his own. Do you all know his own Facebook? Neil Bonnet? No, me. no, I mean not Neil Bonnet. You, I knew. Oh, you. Yeah. Rick Mast on friends. Facebook. We're you could be friends Man, with I'm cute. Computer literate. We got new studios. It's I, everything's Rick Mast's good. Rick computer literate. Yeah, things are looking up. Neil had had <laughs> two or three bad crashes, head injuries. And uh, I remember Doc Petty had, had talked about, uh, you know, he's one of the leading neuro, neurosurgeons. You know, he's here in Charlotte, I guess. And uh, I guess you're, it's kind of like me and carbon dioxide. Your body has reserves for everything. In lay terms, listen to the doctors over the years. Don't everybody take this to the bank, folks. But <laughs> this is kind of Rick Mast, MD. Me. Dr. Mast. <laughs> <laughs> your body has, in lay terms, your body has reserves for everything. I use my reserve up for carbon dioxide. Your head's the same way, evidently. You, you have a head injury, the next injury, less of a blow, more of an injury. Next injury, less of a blow, more of an injury, okay? Neil had had some bad head injuries, and I think he'd been advised maybe he shouldn't be in a race car. Right. right. I heard, a small injury could do it. We were practicing or during the race or before the race. We were practicing. Uh, they had a wreck in turn three or four, you know. So we said it was bonnet. No big deal. And I see his car come by on a rollback, and I look at it, and, you know, it smashed back some of the front. You know, like, well, yeah, I pull a backup car out. It kills the guy, right? No way this car is tore up bad enough. Right. You know? So I always wondered if that's really what happened with Neil. You know, just a little bit of an impact, did he? Red Hart wrecked him just about the same spot. He impacted the wall just about the same spot. And those guys are the best of buddies. You know, I always yeah. thought that was ironic. Right, that's you know? true. Just a little bit of information. There you yep. go. All right. Well, it is the 10th anniversary of the passing of one of the greatest you raced against <sighs> yes him. Thanks is. for coming in and talking about him. Glad to be here, guys. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.